Hello and welcome to another episode of my Ability System series. This time we will deal with giving the player the ability to reorganize skills in the hotkey bar using drag and drop. And we will also make it so that you can remove skills from the hotkey bar by just dropping them somewhere on the screen. To get started we need to create the widget that will appear when we start our drag and drop operation. So let's create a new user interface. Widget blueprint, just call that W underscore skill drag. And that will be very simple to set up. So we just remove the canvas, instead add a size box, and check width and height override for that. We will set both to 94, that is the size of our icon, when you subtract the size of the border that we use for it. After that, let's add an image to this, make it fill, no padding, let's call it skill icon, and make sure that's set to be a variable. Let's go to the graph and on event construct just drag in the skill icon and set brush from texture. Hook that up to event construct. So when we create this widget we will set the texture for the skill image here. And let's promote the texture to a variable called skill texture which we will set to editable and expose on spawn so we can tell our widget about what that is supposed to be when we create it. File, save, and we can already close our skill drag widget. Back in our skill system folder, let's create a new folder for drag and drop. And in here, right click, create a new blueprint class, expand the all classes, and search for drag drop operation. We will select this as a parent class and call that skill drag then open that up and we just need two variables in here so the first one will be the from hotkey which is just the hotkey we started dragging from type for that will be w underscore skill hotkey reference make that editable and export on spawn since we also spawn the drag and drop operation and the next one will be basically the skill actor also editable and exposed on spawn, but this time it will be a master skill reference. File save and close the drag and drop operation. Now we need to make some modifications to our hotkey slot widget. So we are able to start a drag and drop operation and we also see some feedback when we drag a skill over a hotkey and so on. So open up the skill hotkey. And the first thing you need to do in order to make drag and drop work is to go to your skill button. And here under interaction, let's expand that, we will set the click method to precise click and the touch method to precise tap, even though we don't need that. Otherwise it won't recognize that you're attempting to drag and just call the unclicked event for the button instead, which we don't want to happen. Then let's go over to the graph and we need to add some variables here. First one will be a boolean called dragged over question mark. Then a variable called drag over color. Obviously it will be a linear color. Let's compile and set the default value for this. So I'll just type in a hex linear code, which will be FFD 1007F, a really bright yellow with an alpha of 0.5. So our hotkey will be highlighted in that color when we drag a skill over it. And then we need another variable which is the default color. This will also be a linear color and it will just be white with an alpha of 0.25. That is just the color of our base image. So this one here, actually it is 0.2. So let's fix that here, go to the default color, set to 0.2. Also, let's create a function here, which we will call reset style. And what this will simply do is set dragged over to false, get our base, and set color and opacity to the default color again. After this, we can return. Next thing we need to do is override a function here called onMouseButtonDown. 
and there are a few things that we need to check first. So let's get our assigned spell and check whether that is valid. If it's not valid, that means our hotkey is empty and because of that we cannot start drag and drop operation in the first place. If it's not valid, we will just return and search for handled. But if it is valid, we will perform another check, so a branch. And we want to drag off of the mouse event, search for is button down, mouse button down. And that will be the left mouse button, which we will use for dragging. And we need another condition, which will be that our assigned spell is not on cooldown. So get on cooldown, then search for not, at the not boolean, instead of the not equal boolean. And let's connect that up here. And connect the end to the condition. If it's false, we can simply go into the return node again. But if it's true, we want to call a function with the name detect drag if pressed. Pointer event will be a mouse event, drag key, again left mouse button. And after that, return and connect the return value. Then compile and save. Now we handle detecting our drag and we need to specify what happens when we did that. So override on drag detected. Should be somewhere here. Here it is. And when we detect the drag, let's create a widget. And that will be the w underscore skill drag that we just created. And we need to figure out the skill texture. For that, let's get the assigned spell, get current stage, break that, and let's only see the override icon. Search for is valid and use the boolean. Off of that, add a select node. If it's true, connect the override icon, and if not, off of the assigned spell, we'll get the skill info. Break that and get its icon. So that select node just handles selecting the correct skill icon based on whether there is an override icon of the current stage. Connect that to the skill texture. And after that, we want to create drag and drop operation, the class being a skill drag. And we will connect the widget to the default drag visual so we can actually see that. Pivot will be mouse down and the from hotkey is a reference to self. Then drag in our assigned spell and connect that to the skill actor. And that's everything we had to do for on drag detected, except for returning and connecting operation as well. What we also need to do is to figure out a way of communicating to the player that you can actually drop a spell on another hotkey. So what we can do is override another function here called on drag over. And there are a couple of checks that we need to do. First, let's see whether the operation is a skill drag. So we will cast it to the skill drag operation. And if that cast fails, we can just return with false. But if it succeeds, let's add a branch by holding down B and left clicking. And for our condition, let's check that dragged over is not already set to true, so not. And then hit the plus. So we will have three conditions in total. What we also want to see is that the skill drag from hotkey is not equal to ourselves. And the last condition will be that our assigned spell is not valid. Otherwise the base, which color is changed, will not be shown anyways because it's hidden by the skill icon of the assigned spell. And then we don't need to worry about that. So let's connect that and go into the branch. If it's false, again, let's go to the return node. But if it's true, we will set dragged over to true, drag in our base and set color and opacity to the drag over color. And after that, we can return, but this time with success. All right, now we also need to worry about resetting that style when we are no longer dragging over this hotkey. So we'll write another function on drag leaf that is called and it's an event actually. So let's cast the operation to skill drag again. 
but we only need to do that if dragged over is actually set to true. So let's get that, add a branch, and only if it's true we will cast the operation. And if that cast succeeds, we can just call reset style. All right, when we compile and save now, we should already be able to start a drag and drop operation. All right, get the spell here. And if I move it over an empty hotkey, you can see color changes and it resets if I drag to another hotkey somewhere else. But what I can't do is dropping it because we didn't implement that yet. So let's do that. Override another function, which is called on drop, obviously. And let's cast the operation to a skill drag, then get the from hotkey and check whether that is not equal to ourselves again. Because if that is the case, we don't need to do anything. So add a branch, connect that to the true. If it's false, we will just go into another return node with false, same as when a cast fails. Because currently there are no other drag and drop operations, so we don't need to check for other ones. All right, but if we are not the from hotkey, let's get our assigned spell and check whether that's valid. Because based on that, we need to do different things. If it is valid, we need to swap both skills. If not, just assign it. So let's do it's not valid first, because that's easier. So what we will do is get our from hotkey. Let's just copy that here connect the target and we will clear the assigned spell there and after we did that off of our skill drag let's get the skill actor and we will call assign spell and connect that to the spell so we cleared the hotkey that we were dragging from and then assigned the skill actor to this specific hotkey here after that we can just return this time with true but if it is valid, we need to check whether our assigned spell is on cooldown. Add a branch, connect it to the condition and hook that up to is valid. If it is on cooldown, we can return. So we won't do anything and let's check success here. So that drop was handled, but we were not able to do anything because of the cooldown. If it's false, we will get our assigned spell and promote that to a local variable called local assigned spell because we will clear that now. So let's call clear assigned spell for ourselves. Then for the from hotkey, we will also call that clear assigned spell. And maybe add a reroute node. Then let's assign a spell to ourselves. And this will be the skill actor from our drag and drop operation. So let me copy that over and hook that up to the drag and drop operation cast. Also off of our from hotkey, we will also assign a skill there. So assign spell. And because of that, we had to create a local variable here. Local assign spell will feed into that. And before we can return, let's also reset our style. Because if you drop something, the event on drag leave is not called. So we have to manually reset our style. And after that, return with true. All right, if we play now, we should be able to reassign, for example, arcane side to one, All right? It moved there. And now if I hit F6, nothing happens. If I hit one, however, the spell is casted. If it's back from cooldown, you can also move it to F7. So they swap positions basically, and then one would be used to cast the Flame Nova. Okay, that's working. The last thing I wanted to do is that you can drop the skills just somewhere in the main widget to clear that hotkey. And well, that's very simple to set up. So you just open up the main widget, go back to the graph, override on drop, get the operation and cast to skill drag. If it is a skill drag, we'll simply get the from hotkey and clear the sign spell. After that, return with true. If the cast failed, we can return with false. File and save. And for our main widget to actually notice the drop, 
we need to go to the W main here in the designer, set visibility to visible. And then we can drag and drop spells to remove them from a hotkey bar. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. And in the next episode, we will bring in some enemies that we can fight. So see you in the next episode.